and also the amount of money and distraction that goes into seeking for second term and how politicians, because they want to get a second term, will, will not be concentrating much on what they are supposed to do. We now said, let's have a CCA single term so that once you're elected, you know that you have a mandate to run for six years without fearing anybody or anything as long as you're in line with the provision of the law. And that also goes with ensuring that the, cred the electoral process is credible with all the elections holding in a single day. And then one will say, if we say it's a six year single term, what if the president dies? And then are we going to have a repeat of what happened in the time of Jonathan when another person comes from another zone and he might distort that zoning arrangement. We have put provisions in place to ensure that when we say it's six years single term for a particular zone, it remains six years and it can never change. And that is why the bill is now proposing for the position of two vice presidents. One will be a vice president for succession, which will come from the same zone with the president, and the other one will be vice president administration from the other part of the country. And what that means is that in the event of death of the president or impeachment of the president, the second vice president's association assumes office immediately and completes the remainder of that time and cannot seek any election. With that, if it is the turn of the north or the east and they have six years, that six years will remain six years and it will not change because even if it's impeached or even if the president dies, the second vice president's association will be sworn in immediately to complete the remainder of that time. And also, in order not to incur extra costs on the country, this vice president will now have ministerial status, being the only vice president, being the minister, only minister from that state. So instead of having two ministers, it's going to be one minister. Once that person is elected as the vice president's association, he automatically becomes minister for that state. So we are not going to spend extra costs maintaining that office. And also the issue of financial autonomy and accountability of local government is also to ensure that that is equally uh, in place. That we also have the bill also. So we want to conclude this, we want to conclude this press conference by greeting all Nigerians of all walks of life on this historic day. Our men and women in the different sectors of the economy, our vibrant youths, persons with disabilities, our law enforcement agencies, our traditional leaders, political leaders, fathers of our communities and custodians of our cultural heritage, our religious leaders, custodians of faith and morals, our effective civil society organizations, and the media. This tax ahead of us is huge and cannot be achieved without you. It is, on, it is a tax for all of us. Our work does not go beyond taking the initiative to get them into parliament. To ensure that the bills are successful is on all of us. Call up all your representatives in the National Assembly and, so, so, and solicit their support for CCA, CCA single term presidents, rotation of the presidency between North and South and among the geopolitical zones, all elections in one day, and also more importantly, to ensure that all those who lose the elections and seek for certificate or certified tool copies gets that within 14 days. And also to avoid a situation whereby you'll be seeking for this document and the time for filing your petition elapses. So such things will not happen again if we go by this uh, proposal. And to make sure that it's mandatory and compulsory that election result must be electronically transmitted. And whosoever transmits a result or announces a result that is not electronically transmitted or the figures does not tally with the total number of vote cast is going in for seven years imprisonment without any option of fine. Lobby, participate in the hearings and use of all manners of platforms, digital media, social media, traditional media, to advocate for the passage of these critical reform bills. Ours is a commitment to building a united, stable, and prosperous nation. And with your contribution, cooperation, and support, Nigeria can and must become a great and modern nation. We through conscience and determination. Let us join hands and rededicate ourselves to the service of this great country so that it will be a place we can be proud of. We cannot afford to fail in this tax, and by the grace of God, we shall succeed. We ultimately thank our fellow members of the Federal House of Representatives, the 10th House, the People's House, 
and more importantly, the leadership of the House, led by our able speaker, Tajuddin Abbas, Eyan Zazu, and Benjamin Okeze, candidate speaker, Otabri Bende, for the focused leadership and for a well-researched and strategic legislative agenda that have inspired us today, even as we further seek their support in ensuring we achieve our common prosperity. We salute the speaker for constituting the Constitutional Amendment Committee, chaired by the Deputy Speaker, who has the great capacity required in delivering the tax ahead. We have confidence in them and our colleagues that our proposal will be supported. May God bless our country and may God bless you all. Thank you. And at this juncture, let me invite my brothers to make their brief comments. Thank you. Colleagues, you all will agree with us that our proposal is based on very detailed research in attempting to cure defects that we all are very much aware of. Like we often say, the law is like a living thing. It could die, it could be sick. And in appreciating the fact that these laws requiring amendments are obviously sick and requires medication, we will not pretend not to have known the several agitations over time of where the presidency should go. When it goes north, those in the south will begin to clamor. The next will be our turn. And in most cases, people don't get the turns because they just wish it's their turn. Same goes for several areas several states where we begin to hear things like, oh, the central has gone, the south has gone. A certain people might be disadvantaged. But if we cure these defects with these amendments, everybody would be guaranteed that sometime you will have the opportunity and that will bond us the more. We're also aware of a certain declaration that was made in Adamawa State, I guess. If we had this form of legislation, that would never have taken place. We know the danger that it threw up if that situation was not managed properly. Adamawa State could have had a lot of crisis because of that declaration. We are also aware of complaints by legal experts representing interests at the various tribunals that they approach the election management body and they've always refused or delayed or even denied giving them materials that they require to prove their cases. Having gone through all of this, there is that desire, there is the need to collectively seek how to resolve the issues. And you cannot resolve them except we confront these laws like we are doing today. We have not said that what we are telling Nigerians should just be taken as is. We all have the opportunity to further help in refining, in distilling the final product to guarantee that what we will have would lead to economic prosperity, political stability, and the greater security and inclusiveness of all of us. You also will agree that at different times, our interests could differ. Some persons would want to travel home because they have a candidate who wants to contest for probably the House of Assembly. And the other elections won't have anything to do with them, they don't bother. So if you aggregate diverse interests, you would find out that voter turnout would definitely improve. A greater number of people will now participate 
in determining who takes the lead, who takes charge of our affairs. And if the elections are conducted in the right ways, the advantage is that we will save a whole lot of resources that will be channeled to the government. There are sectors in this country whose budgetary allocations are probably a little less than 200 billion naira. And in an election year, you find us budgeting over 400 billion just for elections. And if you split it, probably 60, 40, you will have over 200 billion that a certain sector would have needed to perfect their development for that year. So if elections are conducted in one day, you would save a whole lot of resources. Putting this together, I believe that as seated, you will become apostles, you become advocates for these amendments, supporting the group of 35 lawmakers who have taken up this challenge. I want to thank all of us, believing that our appeal for support is taken. The various media houses will take on this discourse, take on this debate, take on this advocacy. At the end of the day, what we will have will be the overall interest and benefit of Nigerians.